Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention! All districts A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go! Let's go! Firefighters! Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire! In just a minute, we'll join Chief Cody and rookie fireman Tim Collins in the big yard out back of Engine Company 209. Strangely enough, they're standing in a small shed, charred and black from a fire they set themselves. But perhaps you recall, it was an important test of an actual new scientific development called wet water. And perhaps you remember the nervous little man, Mr. Peck, who had so amazed Tim's young brother, Jimmy, by proving that even a duck couldn't stay afloat in wet water. Well, what the three men had found from the demonstration of this chemically treated liquid and what it was to mean, we'll see right after this announcement. Let's go, firefighters. Let's get over to test shack number one, back of engine company 209, rookie fireman Tim Collins' outfit. Well, he and Chief Cody and Mr. Peck are already examining the charred ruins inside caused by the fire, which was set to test the new product, wet water, right in action. Well, in test shack number two, a few yards away, Tim's buddy, Fireman Gonical, has just about got his blaze under control using everyday firefighting methods. To Tim, there doesn't seem to be any question but what the experiment is a success. As he says... Chief Cody, the total volume of chemically treated water I used on the fire in here must be much smaller than the amount Gonigal used next door. And the furnishings are far less damaged, am I right? Looks that way, Mr. Peck. Got the fire out faster, cut down the smoke and fumes at the same time. Yes, sir, looks like you folks have really got something in wet water. Thank you, Chief. I... Dear me, isn't that a fire alarm Uh, bell? uh, Quiet a minute. Get the count. Uh, but uh, someone ought to call a fireman. Uh, I mean, uh, that is... Uh, it's us, Chief. That's our call. Excuse me, Chief. Uh, hold it, Tim. How large a tank of your chemically treated water did you cart over here, Mr. Peck? Uh, that's a 215-gallon booster tank. Truck number one is rolling, Tim. Yes, sir. Hold the squad truck in the yard till you get that tank of wet water on. You mean we'll give it a real test now, sir? If the situation warrants it, we will. Hop to it, son. Yes, sir. This is something I don't want to miss. A brilliant idea, Chief Cody. I congratulate you. We'll see how this treated water stands up against the real thing, Mr. Peck. Come along. Uh, Me? Sure. Don't you want to see wet water in action? I have many times in the laboratory, but, well, I I consider actual fires somewhat dangerous, don't you? Of course. That's why we put them out, Mr. Peck. That's why you and I are in such a hurry to get there, aren't we? Uh, this is the first time I've ever ridden in a fire chief's car. Uh, that, that is a fire chief's car. Well, you sound a bit nervous, Mr. Peck. Relax. Uh, uh, but, but the excessive acceleration, Chief Cody. I... Remember what Jimmy Collins said about those long words. Uh, I mean the speed. It's a bit difficult to relax. I'll be glad when we get to wherever we're going. The alarm was rung in at Jasper and Ninth. Maybe you'll be glad to get there. Maybe you won't. Uh, there are factors which make the situation dangerous? No. In fact, the setup puzzles me a little. Uh, why is that? There's not much on top of this hill we heading up here. As you'll see in a minute, no buildings at all. But there's a hotel at the foot of the hill on the other side. I thought you were a stranger here. I am. That's how I know I'm staying at this hotel. Not very modern, but awfully respectable. Family-type establishment, you know. There's your fire. Right ahead up the road. Good heavens, a collision. Two vehicles. Now, there's 209's pumper pulling up for work right now. Bus and a truck, both on fire. Look at the front of that passenger bus, pushed in like an accordion, which, by the way, I used to pay. What I'm looking to see is if they got the passengers out. Yes, there they are, huddled together over there. Good grief. Look at the truck that bus collided with. The front of it's in flames. Dangerous, no doubt. Mr. Peck, with the words you use, surely you can read. See what it says on the side of that burning truck. Oh, yes, high octane. Uh, High octane gasoline. Hey, Conigal, what are you doing with that line? Waiting for the boys to finish coupling of the hydrant, Chief. I mean, you're dragging it over to the bus. Lieutenant's orders, sir. But for Pete's sake, 
There's a fire under the hood of that truck. Doesn't he know what it's loaded with? Yes, sir, but there's still one man trapped in the back of the bus, unconscious. All the others are out. They they couldn't get him, Garnigal? No, sir. The driver tried. He couldn't make it. You can see the whole front of the bus is ablaze. My apology to the lieutenant. We've got to get that man out. Let me let me give you a hand. He's putting one line on the truck, one on the bus. It's all we can do for now, Chief. Ah. Well, there's your pressure. Just that nozzle so you don't get a solid stream, Governor. I can manage, sir, but it looks to me like too much gas and oil behind those flames. Yeah, you're right. Here comes a squad truck with that tank of chemically treated water. You gonna use wet water on a gasoline truck? No. Saving a human life comes first. If they can keep the flames from spreading back to the gasoline tank itself, they'll be okay for a few minutes. Lucky this is a deserted section, huh, Chief? Yeah, you said it. Uh... Here comes one of your men. I'm going to give Tim Collins a hand. Uh, Chief Cody, Chief Cody, at this point, I suggest I might be of assistance. You know, I kind of had an idea you might come through in an emergency, Mr. Peck. If they have the hose attached to that tank of wet water... I think we can count on Tim Collins having everything set. Your line is to be used on the bus, Tim. Okay, Chief. I'll have it over there in a jiffy. Uh, Nice to see you again, Collins. Now, if I may make one suggestion. Suggestions and actions go together here, Peck. Help us drag this line. Yes, sir. You're going to find wet water extremely effective against a gas and oil fire. In fact, without it, I don't think you could get to that man the bus in time. Holy smoke, there's someone in that bus? That's why we can't spare this hose for the gasoline truck right now, Tim. I feel an application of finely divided particles would be advisable in this case, Chief, you know. In giving orders, Peck, the trick is to say what you mean. You mean fog nozzle, say so. Uh, that's the nozzle we had on for the test. Still there. Yeah. Carnegie, we'll divert your host to the gas truck. Scram, bud, Tonto. Ah, hey, Chief, Peck catches on fast. Well, now get, let's get a load of this wet water. Concentrate your spray on the flames at the door and around the driver's seat. Yes, sir. Peck, break those windows along the side. But that's destructive. That's ventilation. If your wet water and a fog nozzle can clear some of the fumes, put the fire out in time. I've wanted to do this ever since I was a boy. There. This is terrific, Chief. Stuff is already knocking those flames out around the door. Yeah. Almost clear enough for us to make a rush into the bus. Yes, sir. Someone would train this fog nozzle on the engine. Those flames keep darting back from the hood. Heck, take over here. You trust your safety to one of my amateur standing? My men are working on the gasoline truck. You can handle the hose. Yes, indeedy. I frequently water the garden of an evening. I will right, well, keep it trained in there. Under the dashboard. The smoke and fumes are thinning out in there, son. Yes, sir. I think we can drag that man out before it hits us. All right, all set, sir. It's up to you now, Peck. Don't worry, my boy. No matter how wet my feet get, I shan't fail you. Oh, what's a little soaking, Peck? A little. May I remind you, sir, this is wet water. Grinning in spite of themselves, the chief and Tim prepare to enter the bus. The spread of flames from the motor has now been checked. Unless a sudden spurt from under the dashboard should block their way, a rescue is possible. Well, then, they're now through the narrow door, moving quickly through the smoke to the back of the bus, and the man sprawled unconscious there. A moment later, they emerge, carrying the man between them. Over here, Tim. Away from the bus. Yes, sir. Here come some of the other passengers now. They'll take care of them. Get an ambulance. Yeah, that's it. Now, let's get that wet water hose line... Over to the dangerous spot. Yes, sir. Brother, that's going to be a real test. The engine of that truck is really flaming up. Just so long as we can keep it from spreading back to the actual gasoline tank. Now, look at Chief. There's something wrong. Oh, for Pete's sake. Are they trying to get a hose under that truck? Now, here comes Gonigal. Gonigal, what's up? Yeah, the fire from the motor's been spreading under the truck, Chief. There's going to be trouble. Get your squad truck closer, Tim. Yes, sir. We'll see what that chemically treated water will do. I'm afraid there's not time. It looks to me like the brake drums are going to be burned through, Chief. The brakes? Good heavens, man. Can't you see that truck's on an incline? We tried to get a wedge under the wheels, sir. We couldn't begin to get close enough to fire it. It is moving, Chief. A gasoline truck starting down the hill. Nothing on earth can stop. Those flames are going to be fanned right back to the tank unless it crashes into something. Something? There's a hotel at the foot of this hill. Uh, only a miracle can keep it from plowing right into that building now, Chief. Look at that thing gather speed. And here we stand, helpless, waiting for an explosion that's going to come in a matter of seconds. The three firemen stand aghast as the gasoline truck carrying high-octane gas in its tank careens crazily down the hill, flames spurting from its engine, heading straight for the wooden frame hotel at the bottom of the hill. 
Well, be sure not to miss your next exciting episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But right now, let's listen to this message. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special message for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. I guess the danger from that truck carrying gasoline is clear enough to all of us. But I wonder if you realize the possible danger of gasoline in your own home. Yes, one fire in ten is caused by the incautious use of gasoline, kerosene, or other inflammable fluids in the home. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of using gasoline to clean with inside the house. Now, we all know how easily those fumes are ignited by a match, pilot light, or even a spark from static electricity. So if you've forgotten, let me remind you again, you can never be safe using any inflammable, explosive fluid inside your home. Well, that's all for now. Till I drop in the next time, so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's go! Let's go! Fire fighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.